Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to like and subscribe for a higher power level next time you play, maybe. Today we're building Vegeta, the Prince of Sands, and the best biological dad in Dragon Ball. I don't think that's the thing he wants to be better at than Kakarot, but it's the only thing he's got, so let him have it. Before we start with our goals for this build, let's be clear we're not going to be getting a giant ape form because your tail gets cut off kind of early and you don't really use it after that. However, we do want transformation, maybe even a couple of them to be a really super saiyan. Next, we need the power of flight, the ability to blast around with crazy amounts of speed. Finally, we need garlic, sorry, gallic gun, the ability to shoot some huge light blasts and some smaller ones too to be ready on demand. Before we get started, I want to thank Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. If you're looking for a way to keep your data safe while you browse the web, you don't need to find seven Dragon Balls, you just need Surfshark VPN. As a fun little bonus to keeping all of your info safe, you can also use it to watch region locked content on your favorite streaming services like Uncut Gems on Netflix, one of my favorite movies of last year. This is how you win. That's a reference to the movie. It'll make more sense if you've seen it. Download Surfshark VPN and you can watch it. Oh my God. It works on your computer, phone, or browser and will expand your binging horizons while keeping you safer. It really is the perfect quarantine product. We worked with them last month, but they altered the deal a little bit, now offering 85% off of your purchase and an extra three months for free when you enter offer code 2LOCK at checkout. This deal is insane, people. It's a great product. And signing up with the offer code really helps my channel so this is how everyone wins now back to the video for stats we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook roll for stats if you want but you really need to watch out for multi-classing requirements it's time to level with everybody anime characters and dungeons and dragons characters never really match up anime characters have 30 in every stat with 40 extra points to put where they want i'll be using what i call the rule of relativity basically meaning that some characters get raised up by dungeons and dragons like steve harrington and some get dragged down like superman you're in the superman category strength will be number one you can punch people People through mountains that's pretty good dexterity next you're able to move so fast the human eye can't detect it i think that's pretty fast constitution after that you can get punched through a mountain and think very little of it follow that up with wisdom we'll need it for multi-classing and you can perceive the world fast enough to fight people that are as fast as you are maybe even faster stupid kakarot charisma is a bit low but it'll be raised up by racial bonuses to make sure you're as charming and scary as you need to be we'll dump intelligence i know you fly spaceships but you're not really using it for anything if we want to go super saiyan later we need to figure out what race a saiyan would be in dungeons and dragons unfortunately there isn't a race of people who can fly and charge up their energy to glow with a bright yellow light in DD. except for protector asimar they get plus two to their charisma and plus one wisdom 60 feet of dark vision celestial resistance to resist radiant and necrotic damage the light bearer ability for the light cantrip which creates some glowing light you could maybe affix to your hair for flavor reasons and healing hands that will restore an amount of hp equal to your total level as an action to a creature you touch for a little sensu bean action for your background modify the soldier background for athletics and acrobatics rather than intimidation not because I don't want you to have intimidation you can just get it later from your first class that first class being barbarian of course because your anger makes you stronger barbarians can grab two skills from the barbarian list I'd go for perception and intimidation you have very keen senses and yell better than just about anyone speaking of yelling barbarians can use rage to give themselves some bonuses like advantage on strength checks and saves resistance to bludgeoning piercing and slashing damage and extra damage for strength based attacks punches currently deal one plus your strength modifier and you're proficient with them so they can get that bonus don't worry though we'll get some better punches in a second you also get unarmored defense making your ac 10 plus your constitution and dexterity modifier currently it would probably be better for you to use a breastplate which would be a medium armor to make your ac 17 rather than 13 it's a little bit better and i would say it's pretty fitting for that classic saiyan armor you land on earth with but you'll want to throw it away at the second level because we're hopping over to the first level of monk first level monks get martial arts which lets them make an unarmed attack as a bonus action after you make an attack with your action using an unarmed attack or a monk weapon vegeta doesn't really use weapons that's more of a trunks thing so just punch punching will work really well for you as it can be strength based even though monks do get the option to use their dexterity but strongs are perfectly valid that's a strength based monk 
Your unarmed attacks also deal 1d4 damage now, though it's worth noting you don't get any of these martial arts bonuses if you're wearing armor, so I guess you'll have to take a little AC penalty for a second. We would also get unarmored defense monk style here, but we're going to be investing in our constitution more than our wisdom, so just keep using the barbarian version. Second level monks get key points, which they can use to do cool prince things. Flurry of Blows lets you make two unarmed attacks instead of one with your bonus action for some serious speed. For some serious movement speed, Step of the Wind lets you dash or disengage as a bonus bonus action and doubles your jump distance for the round. I'm guessing you're going to be dashing to get up close and personal with anyone who would dare challenge you. Patient Defense lets you dodge as a bonus action, giving you advantage on dexterity saving throws and enemies will have disadvantage to hit you, which should help keep the damage off. You also get unarmored movement, making you faster while you're not wearing armor, which will pair very well with your Super Saiyan ability from Protector Asimar, Radiant Soul. This gives you a 30 foot flying speed for a minute or 40 thanks to your unarmored movement, and you can add your level in radiant damage to one attack per round, which will actually get even better next level. Third level monks can deflect missiles, letting you reduce the damage of ranged attacks by 1d10 plus your dexterity modifier and monk level. Bullets just bounce off you like your attacks bounce off of Kakarot. Sorry about that. You can also choose a monastic tradition. Sun Soul monks get radiant sun bolts, letting you shoot bolts of radiant energy as a monk weapon with a 30 foot range. You can even use them for your flurry of blows if you want to just rain down some serious firepower. Unfortunately, these are going to be using your dexterity modifier, so we'll need to invest in both that and strength. If you watch the Piccolo video, you might be realizing that it's kind of hard to do the Z Fighter thing with strength and dexterity. Kind of just makes for a suboptimal build, but, uh... It's still fun. Fourth level monks get slow fall, letting you reduce falling damage by five times your monk level as a reaction. You don't have to worry about losing concentration on your radiant soul ability because it's not a spell, but this could be useful every now and then. You also get an ability score improvement and will bump our strength and constitution for harder hits, better AC, and better HP all in the same level. Fifth level monks get stunning strike, letting you force a wisdom saving throw of eight plus your proficiency bonus and wisdom modifier on a creature you hit with a melee attack. Failing that, they're stunned until the end of your next turn, so you'll have advantage on all five follow-up attacks against them. You also get extra attack, letting you attack twice with your action, and twice again with your flurry of blows to get the most out of your Super Saiyan Rage. Your monk die also bumps up to a d6, which should help you hit a little bit harder. Speaking of hitting harder, let's improve our rage by jumping back to Barbarian. Second level Barbarians can make reckless attacks, letting you give yourself advantage on an attack roll if you don't mind giving your enemies advantage to hit you. Would Vegeta overextend himself to hit Frieza harder? Yeah he would. You also get Danger Sense, giving you advantage on dexterity saves if you can see the source of damage. Giant planet destroying blasts would probably be a dex save, if I were to guess. Third level barbarians can choose a primal path. Zealot is perfect for someone who believes that they are part of a superior people. You get Divine Fury, which lets you add extra radiant damage to the first melee attack you make in a round, equal to 1d6 plus half your barbarian level. Pairing this with your radiant soul, you should be able to light your enemies up pretty intensely. You also get Warrior of the Gods, meaning if people want to resurrect you with a spell like Raise Dead, they don't have to use any material components, so no Dragon Balls required. Fourth level Barbarians get another ability score improvement. Strength is the most in character thing to invest in, so let's invest in it, we don't really power build here. Though since we're going to be using the strength based punches for Monk, this will actually make our punch damage modifier while raging, plus 7 for 28 bonus damage with a flurry of blows, that's nice. And we'll go back to Monk now, as our punches aren't magical, and they will be at the 6th level of Monk, because you get Key Empowered Strikes, which makes your punches magical. You'll be able to punch anything in the cosmos. You also get Searing Arc Strike, letting you cast Burning Hands with two key points. It creates a 15-foot cube that deals 3d6 fire damage to creatures that fail a dexterity saving throw inside. It's not Super Vegeta, and if I'm being honest, for Sun Soul Monks in my games, I swapped this ability for the ability to cast Fly with four key points, basically taking a page out of the Four Elements book. I just think that's so Sun Soul Monk feels so Z Fighter inspired, but doesn't have a method of making its own flight unless you went Protector Asimar, which we did, because I have no idea if your DM is going to like my homebrew tweak. Seventh level monks get Stillness of Mind, letting you remove an effect of charming or frightening on yourself as an action. The only thing charming Vegeta is his wife, thank you very much, and the only thing frightening him is also his wife. Evasion lets you take half damage on a failed deck save and no damage on a successful one. Pairing this with advantage from Danger Sense is great, letting you basically stand still when someone throws a fireball at you and smuggle shrug when the smoke dies down. Then they'll be like, whoa, and you can repeat that formula for 200 episodes. Eighth level monks get another ability score improvement, cap off your strength to punch as hard as possible. Again, we're aiming to punch things through mountains. Ninth level monks get unarmored movement improvement, letting you move up walls and over water while unarmored, as long as you end your turn somewhere solid. This should help you save your super saiyan flight from radiant soul for when you're actually in a fight, rather than just to get around. Tenth level monks get purity of body, making you immune to poison and disease. The only thing sick 
sick about Vegeta is his muscle mass. Keep in mind, this includes poison damage, not just the poisoned condition, which is pretty great. 11th level Sun Soul Monks get Searing Sun Burst, a Gallic gun with extra garlic. This lets you use your action to force a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 20 foot radius sphere. Failing that, they take 2d6 radiant damage, and you can add 2d6 more radiant damage with a key point for a maximum of 8d6 and 3 key points. That's pretty much fireball with a save that can't be evaded, and in my opinion, a much better damage type. It's not bad, even if your monk save kind of is, which is kind of a bummer. If they make the save, they don't take any damage. But hey, at least your monk die bumps up to a d8 here. That's nice. 12 level monks get an ability score improvement. Dexterity will help your Radiant Sun Bolts. Wisdom would help your monk saves and Constitution would help your toughness. All are things I'd like to be higher, but I'll go for Dexterity. You're almost as quick as you are strong. It's the most in character option, I think. 13th level monks get Tongue of the Sun and Moon, meaning that you can communicate with any creature that speaks at least one language. You're not from Earth, but it's not like you had trouble communicating with the locals. Although they didn't really beg for mercy and bow down to you. Maybe they couldn't understand you. 14th level monks get Diamond Soul, giving you proficiency with all saving throws in the game it just kind of makes you better than everyone else which works out because you are 15th level monks get timeless body meaning that you don't feel the effects of aging vegeta's body is absolutely shredded it's not going to be quitting anytime soon our capstone is the 16th level of monk for one last ability score improvement i'll advise more dexterity for more consistent lasers and better ac while you're not wearing armor i wish we could cap it off as well as our constitution and our wisdom and probably our charisma too again anime characters struggle to get into D, &D accurately because they're all just so busted but could this build still be good of course you got four magical punches per round with a plus eight modifier not to mention a bonus of 1d6 plus 22 radiant damage on any one of those hits so you'll be able to absolutely wail on people you're also incredibly fast 55 feet of flying speed and the ability to dash as a bonus action will let you go where you need to finally your lowest saving throw is plus five meaning that anything that isn't a direct attack shouldn't be an issue for you but for direct attacks your ac is only 16 not exactly worthy of the prince of saiyans you're also limited in key points with your flurry of blows burning one every round or big gallic guns costing you three key points per shot if you're trying to do a whole aoe thing finally strongs just aren't the ideal monks if we just focused on dexterity we could have invested in wisdom for better saves on our monk abilities but big lasers are just part of your kit and you're just as likely to get up close and personal with a flurry of blows Punch everything that disrespects your Saiyan pride until it stops moving. Just watch out for someone who focused a little bit more on speed. They might make you realize you're not the perfect being you think you are. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. If you're looking for some more fun, check out Tulak and Mango, where we do long form let's plays of some of my favorite games.